All right, so welcome to the CSS basics portion of Intro to Web. Uh, today we're going to be going over essentially how to get some of the really basic styles going. And this gives us another piece of the puzzle so we can actually start making something. And like I said last time, if you don't fully understand HTML, that is perfectly fine. Same applies here. If you don't fully understand what's going on with the CSS, that is also perfectly fine because you're going to be using it over and over and over and over and over again as we continue throughout this course. So with that said, we need to go over what CSS actually is. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Uh, CSS is a is a technology that does basically exactly what it says. It, it stylizes the components, it stylizes your structure, and it gets the document looking the way you want it to. Okay, so CSS is also based on a series of rules is what they call it. So you're going to address a thing, and then you're going to apply some rules to it. All right. One of the things that we need to be very cautious of and very aware of is that a CSS also functions on a series of weights. So we'll be getting into that a little bit more here shortly, but I really want you to keep that in mind when we start looking at some of these things and examples, how it's going to apply here in the future. So one thing I really do want to point out is what's highlighted here in these orange boxes is that one, it can look very different, and then two, it can be extraordinarily simple. So right here is that A tag that we talked about in the first section, that anchor tag or action tag, depending on who you're talking to. And notice that it's just a color, so the color text is this red color, and then text decoration of none. And what this is, is this over here. So it's actually the text itself and not necessarily this image of the play button right here. So it's that text, okay? And then we also have to come up here and look at these classes. Again, we're gonna to have to go over these here in a few minutes, but notice that we have a display and that we have padding as well. So essentially what this is and what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that CSS is a series of, I want to apply, to this thing and then inside of that declaration you're going to tell it exactly what to do so the logic behind it is extraordinarily simple uh, where this can get complex is when you start implementing a bunch of rules all at once to different things and they start colliding with each other so with that said let's go into how exactly to address some of these things and the first thing that we're going to do is address it by ID. So this is the most efficient way of doing it. This also has, like what I was talking about before, in terms of the weight, this has the highest weight as well. So your CSS rule by ID is going to have the highest weight. It's also the most effective if you have one element. So here's your ID selector. It is hashtag for most people in the world. Uh, if you're a little bit older like I am, this is definitely a pound sign. But no matter what you call this, this is the symbol that you're going to need for an ID selector. And then after that, you're going to give it the name, whatever it is. And then this example here is a background color of light gray. So this is where we have to start talking about Okay, yes, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they all function together, but you have to have a way of interacting with the different documents that we're giving it. And this is where those attributes that we talked about in the first lecture with the HTML become so important because this is how, this is an attribute, an ID of form container is an attribute. So if we come down here, this is, obviously HTML, but this is a form tag, which is a standard tag that you have with HTML5. We have a class here, we haven't used that yet, but here's the ID, ID equals form container. And what this is essentially is going, I'm gonna give this form an attribute of ID, 
and I'm going to set that ID the form container and now I have access to that in the CSS through this pound sign and then ID is form container and I want to set this to light gray all right so this is what that ends up looking like because now that entire container is light gray okay so this is a very simple example of what css can do for you but we have to start somewhere so let's move on css rule by class all right so basically the same logic except for a class allows you to address multiple items all with the same i don't want to call it an id but the same class name essentially okay so to avoid more confusion than what I've already done here. So here is class down here in your HTML, class equals button, and you can have multiple classes with the text of button, all right? And so this would allow you to address all buttons with a particular style. And this is obviously useful for when you have, say, main colors and secondary colors and things that or states for errors or, error codes or text or something along those lines where it's the same everywhere but it's found in multiple locations on the dom and inside of your application so here's your class of button all right down here this is the attribute that you can address the class selector is actually a period for this one so period button which is a string and then we're going to give it a series of essentially properties to be and what this ends up looking like is this button down here. So we addressed the button, we gave it green, the, the color is black for the text itself, and then we gave it a, a border radius and then some padding, all right? So this is a, again, another very simple example of how to do this, but again, you have to start somewhere. Okay, pseudo classes. This is a concept that you're gonna to have to get good with, but it is a abstract concept. So a pseudo class is in CSS essentially tracks the state of a particular element. And what I mean by that is a common one is hover. So when you have the cursor over something, you can tell it to do something else. The state has changed. And because that state has changed, you can change it to something else. So what we're trying to do here is, okay, here's the class. We're doing a class selector here. The class selector button for that text, which is still this. And now we're going to address the state whenever it's being hovered over with a mouse or a cursor. And then we're going to change its properties. So transition is a animation property. Transition duration is still an animation property, but it's going to be by time. All right. And then background color is what we're going to do to change to green yellow. So it's going to be a much brighter green when we hover over this. So, and that's what this looks like here when we hover over it. And I'm going to give you an example when we actually do the lab portion of this. But again, these presentations are meant for you to see what is happening before we actually do it, or at least get a somewhat of a grasp of doing this before you have to concern yourself about syntax. We're trying to learn concepts at the moment. Okay, so I've already explained what a pseudo class is, but here is a list, not a full list, of everything that you can do in terms of the state. Uh, and this list is on W3C. So again, just like in the last presentation, and it's going to be a common theme throughout, don't try to memorize all these. The ones that you remember are the ones you're going to use the most, but just be aware that a pseudo class is a state of the object. So based on whatever's happening with that object, whatever's happening with the DOM element, uh, you can do something with it, okay? So here's your list, here's what they look like. We used hover, which is going to be down here a little bit more, but based on the, the state, again, you can do something. So let's move on. And now we can address the uh, CSS rule by a tag. Now, 
one thing I'm going to point out is that when you start doing things like tag selectors, uh, tag selectors are not nearly as efficient and they're not very precise either because especially an example like this, a div, there's going to be a lot of divs on your document. Same thing with spans and same thing with action tags and same thing uh, with images. Uh, uh, this is a very imprecise tool and generally speaking we haven't gotten into how to step into children from a parent uh, tag but typically that's when you're going to be using a div selector or a tag selector is when you actually need to get to something and you have to start at a parent or a grandparent tag but it does work like this if you want to be very uh, imprecise with a particular property. So in this case, we're using the color of violet. Okay, we're addressing this div tag. This div tag is going to be reapplied to, so we're wasting cycles there. And then it's going to change the, the color of this text. And then uh, the color of the button is going to stay the same because we have a different weight, but it's going to change the color of the text. Okay. Okay, so in terms of the styles that you have access to, again, this is don't memorize them. You'll memorize the ones that you use a lot, but in terms of what you have available to you, again, W3C has a very good list for you. All right, so everything over here, and then I have it here as W3 uh, CSS, but if you need the web address, it's w3schools. Dot com CSS default dot ASP. Okay, so we went over this a little bit in the last lecture about developer view or inspector tool. Uh, you're going to be using this a lot and you're going to need it a lot when you're troubleshooting. So F12 or uh, I believe it's shift I or shift control I to open up to the keyboard. Okay. Sources tab, if you need whatever's downloaded for you for you guys at this level, because we're not using servers, uh, this is going to be a file. So if you need to get to a file that's actually on the browser, this is how you do it, through the Sources tab. Network, uh, we're not going to be using the Network tab uh, unless there's a, a reason to do so. But again, we're not connecting to a server. Really no reason to, not at this level. But it's there when you need it for web programming one, because you will need it there. Okay, performance. Again, we're not getting into performance too much in this course. I'm gonna highlight the big things in terms of performance, but in terms of you understanding what this actually does or how to use it, not so much. Uh, Lighthouse, this is a good way to get a snapshot of performance. So when you're doing your web critiques, uh, this is there, and this is in Chrome natively, and then if you're going to use Firefox, you can download the web plugin for it. Okay, all right, CSS. So this is where we have to start getting into how the cascading aspect of CSS, and the reason why I have this highlighted here is because notice from before we have our violet text here. But there's also text inside of that button, in theory, that should have given it violet text as well. However, uh, because we addressed dot button, which has a higher weight after div here, it actually applied the color of black to the text. So this is exactly what the, the cascading uh, style sheet is, where, hey, based on a series of weights, we can do different things. The other thing that cascading uh, style sheets is uh, used for is when you have different, the same weight, but you have a different file. So we have this file here and then this file here, right? This file that's on the bottom, if it's going to be appended last, that's the property that's going to be shown on the browser because it was appended last with the last or with the uh, same property value or same weight. Uh, this can get out of hand really fast if you don't organize your CSS pr 
properly. And we'll go over how to do this a little bit later, but for now, you just need to be aware of it and we'll practice more later. Okay, CSS inheritance, essentially what I was just talking about, uh, whatever's appended last. And you can inherit properties from your parent, which is exactly what this div is. Uh, but if you address a object directly with a higher weight, which again, if we're gonna review that real quick, a ID is the highest, a class is the second highest, a tag is the third, and then whatever the browser defaults are is the least weighted, okay? But for now, just understand that the more direct that you are with your weight and your uh, declarations uh, is going to be what's going to be applied last. Okay. CSS priority. I've been calling it weight this entire time. It just depends on who you're talking to. Again, we, we've been talking about this quite a bit up to this point uh, in terms of weight. And we'll, we'll get into that more as we do our projects because it will pop up. No doubt about it. Scoring. And that was it for the slideshow. So this is where we got to get into the lab for today. And what we're going to do is take that same example that we had from last time. And then we're going to add some more to it. So we're going to open this up real quick. Yes, I trust myself. Okay, here's our file structure. We have J, uh, bike JPEG and then we have index.html. We're going to open this up with live server again. All right, I'm going to pull this up here now. Now I'm going to go like that. Okay, so over here we got our Billy RS660 and then we got our image. What we're going to do here is we're going to want to give this text a little bit of style and then we're going to make this image fit within its container. And this is exactly why I did it like this, where I gave the div an ID that really didn't do anything except for hold this image. Well, this is exactly why. Uh, so we're going to address this image and make it fit within this container. So we're gonna give it an ID because we need an attribute for CSS to talk to the DOM so we can actually address this. So ID, well, we're gonna call this image for now. Okay, there's that. Let's move that over. Let's... So at this point, what we're going to have to do is, one, I'm going to click to highlight and make sure that my file directory is active. We're going to come up here to this icon right here. We're going to have a new folder added, and we're going to call this styles. All right, so now we've got our styles. We need to put something in there, and this is where CSS is going to go. Now, I'm still going to call this index.css. And the reason why I'm gonna do it like this is because I'm gonna make sure that this CSS is associated with this index.html. Now, with that said, index.css doesn't have the same type of standards to it that index.html does. So, with that said, you can name basically what you want. However, uh, I generally find it uh, best practice and a lot of other developers do as well that you name the CSS file that's going with the HTML file or any view file uh, the same as that view name. So we're going to use index.css here. When you start getting more files for CSS, you might have a global in there or uh, CSS files for maybe components or something along those lines. But uh, those should be self-explanatory, and they're also more advanced topics, so we'll get to them later in the course. But for the time being, we're going to name this index.css, and then we're going to get this picture to actually fit within its container. Because right now we just see some blue, which obviously represents the sky of the photo that was taken in. But we need to get this to where it works. 
So just like we were talking about in the presentation, we need to address this. Now we give it an ID, an ID of, I'm pretty sure that image. Okay, and we're gonna open that up, ID of image. And then we're gonna give it a width of 100%. So what this is gonna do is essentially say, hey, image, make sure that your width is 100% of the container that you occupy. So in this case, it's going to be this div right here, okay? So what this is gonna do is, hey, image, fit within uh, this div. So we're gonna save this. We are going to save this. Now, because we have a live server, notice that this image hasn't done anything yet. So one of the things that we need to do still is to make sure that the DOM or the HTML file actually has that CSS. So what we're gonna to have to do is open up this head file. I'm gonna to go to link relation equals style sheet href okay this is where we're going to have to focus on that relative pathing again so dot slash styles index css and we're going to close that and now we're going to save and that updated our image. So notice that it fits on the screen now and you don't have just this big blue sky over here. We can actually see the entire image. So we just fit that image within its container. Now, one thing I do wanna point out since we're talking about containers and how things interact with one another is if I come over here to this R S660 container, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to index.css, ID, paste the string, we're gonna open this up and then I'm gonna give this a width of 50%. Now, I'm gonna give you a second to think about it. If image is gonna fit within its container and then we subtract or we make the container 50% less of its size, what do you think is going to happen? So I'm going to save this. And we just made our image smaller. So this is exactly what we meant earlier or in the last presentation that HTML is the structure. How do you exactly want these images or items or objects on the DOM to actually be shown? And this is a little bit, a small bit of how you control things like images for their size. And you do it through dits and you do it through manipulating the image itself. And there's patterns to do this well so you don't run into issues later on. But again, we gotta start somewhere. So with that said, uh, I think that is plenty for the time being. Uh, we'll get into obviously more intricate examples later on, but for the time being, this is plenty to absorb up to this point, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.